we're going to talk about it, another concept in physics called work. Work is defined in physics as uh, a quantity which is a product. It's a net force across a distance. This is an example of one of many frustrating situations in physics where physicists have used a term that which, which we use in everyday life, but for a very particular mathematical sense. We use the word work in all kinds of everyday speech. We could say, I would have to go to work today, or I was hard at work, or gosh, something was really hard, a lot of work. But none of those things refer to the physics definition of force times distance. And so we're going to have to reinvent or recast our intuition around what this word work means and set aside our everyday understanding that we use in speech. This isn't exactly a new situation in physics. The word force is un unintuitive. In the, in the physics definition, even though we try to say, I forced the issue or I uh, had to exert a lot of force. And so now again, we have to ask ourselves to, uh, to learn a new mathematical definition and come to develop an intuition around a mathematical definition that may be different from our everyday speech about work. In physics, work means specifically that I've applied a net force across a certain distance to an object. So I've dragged it along applying a net force. In MKS units, the, the unit for work is the joule. It's named after a famous scientist, James Prescott Joule, and it's, so it's a derived unit because it's force times distance. One joule is one newton times one meter. And in terms of base units, that's one kilogram times meter squared per second squared. So keep in mind, whenever we apply a, for, a net force across a distance, that's when we have done work. The word work is really counterintuitive. You can imagine pushing really, really hard on a tree, but it's not moving. And we keep pushing all day and all afternoon and into the evening, and we're exhausted by the end of the day. But to a physicist, this is not an example of work. Why? Because there's not any distance. There's no displacement of that tree. Another example, I can be pulling a train single-handedly, like this man in this picture. This is actually a rather uh, famous example of a person exerting a great deal of effort and dr literally dragging that train behind him. If that man did so, pulls a 10,000 kilogram train, so several tons, uh, at a constant speed of 0.1 meters per second, which you know is not too bad given how heavy it is, is there work being done on the train? Well, in this case, no. There's no work being done. Why? Because when speed is constant, that means the derivative of speed, or the acceleration, which is change in speed, is zero. If there's zero acceleration or zero change in speed, we know that there's no net force on the object. There may be many forces acting on the train, but the net force is zero. The sum of those forces is zero. And therefore, work, which is defined as the net force times distance, is zero. So that's really counter counterintuitive because you would think it takes a lot of work to single-handedly pull a train behind you. Now, it must be the case that that man is exerting a significant force to make that train move. However, there must be some counterbalancing force or opposing force dragging the train in the reverse direction. Most likely, that's friction. So even though the man is exerting a, net, uh, a force, the net force in the train is zero, and so the overall or net work on the train is zero. Now, it has to be remembered that force and displacement are vectors, and so it's not a simple matter to simply multiply them. We're going to have to revise our definition that work is net force times distance to use a, a dot product, because work is supposed to be a number, one joule of work, or two joules of work. It's just a number. It has no direction. In order to make a simple number out of two vectors like net force and displacement, we need to come up with the scalar product or dot product. And so the actual definition is work is the dot product of net force times displacement. With a dot product, we have, there's a slightly new connotation or implication here, and that is I can exert one newton of net force on a mass, but if I do so, at an angle relative to the overall displacement vector, then I haven't done quite as much work as if I had exerted my one newton of force in exactly the horizontal direction, like in this picture. So I have a net force at 60 degrees, and that creates approximately one half, because it's cosine of 60 is one half, times the normal, the typical force if I had exerted that one newton of force uh, exactly 
in the horizontal direction. So here's a practice question. In each of these identical blocks, there are multiple forces being exerted on the blocks. There are a 2 newton force and a 4 newton force. And I would like you to rank these four situations by the case in which the, we go from the largest amount of overall work done on the block or net work done on the block to the smallest overall work done on the block. And let's assume that in each of the four cases, the block is being moved by exactly one meter to the right. Well, the largest amount of, for of work being done on the block is in case A. In this case, both the 2 newton force and the 4 newton force point in the right-hand direction, and that's in the same direction as the displacement. So the net, net work would be the 6 newtons times that 1 meter. The second largest would be case C, because in this case, both the 4 newton force and the 2 newton force are, in some sense, directed to the right, but the 4 newton force is at a 60 degree angle relative to the 2 newton force and the, to the, relative to the overall displacement vector, which is exactly to the right. So in this case, this is not quite as large as A. The case of B is the third largest uh, work because the 4 newton force is to the right and the 2 newton force is to the left, and so there's a net force of 2 newtons to the right. And the net work then would be 2 newtons times 1 meter. D is actually the case of the smallest overall work. In this case, actually, the work is less than zero. Now, sometimes work is negative. A dot product can be a negative number if the, dis the angle between the force vector and the displacement vector is between 90 and 180 degrees, or the work can be positive if that angle is less than 90 degrees. If net work is negative, that means the net force is pointing in the away direction from the displacement vector, so it's kind of backwards along the displacement vector. And you can kind of imagine what's happening in this case. The, the net force is trying to slow the object down because it's an acceleration in the negative direction. So if negative work is being done, what happens in and an object is initially starting out at some speed, what we, do we know about the speed at a later time? Well, the speed will be less. In other words, if I start out at initial speed v naught, later the speed will be a lower number v final. 